a crime if I didn't show you the very first house that I ever renovated. If you're new here, I'm Lena. I have a background in real estate and I've built an online brand around renovating my forever home called Flipping Gorgeous. And that house that you see today is very luxurious and lavish and large and I have lots of money to spend on it. Was not the case with my very first one. So this is the story of my very first fixer upper and how I made the little money that we had go a very long way. Bedroom, two bathroom, 1200 square foot townhouse was actually my husband's former bachelor pad. And if you would have told me on the night that I stepped into that the first time ever that down the road I would be raising small babies in this house I would have thought you were crazy Long story short my husband is an oral surgeon he lived in this townhome during his initial dental school years and his first residency the market was bad they couldn't sell it so they ended up renting it fast forward four years later and we're moving into it my first child was only six months old when we moved there. This picture actually makes me want to cry because he's turning nine this week and literally, oh, we're so cliche, but where does the time go? But I had to figure out how we were going to make this tiny little townhome work now as a family of three and planning on having more kids and live there for the next four years. Being a University of Georgia alum, my husband is a big fan of red. So the bathroom was red. The vanity is actually in the bedroom. Like it led up to carpet and you could see the vanity. The kitchen was red. It had this, you know, metal backsplash. It was very small. It was very basic. I don't even know if you can find TVs like this anymore, but it had carpet. It had these sliding doors. It was painted yellow. This is a look at the other portion of the very small living room. I knew that I would be spending a lot of time here because I was leaving my job so I could be a stay-at-home mom and move across the state to support him going back to become an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. And I needed to make this place not feel like a cave and somewhere that I wanted to spend my days. So the first thing I tried to do was get rid of this paint and make it a little more open and inviting. See here, we painted the walls lighter and we replaced all the carpet on this floor. I had used engineered wood, but I think that was a mistake. If I could go back again, I would have done an LVP. The engineered hardwood was nice, but it scratched really easily and we had a large dog at the time. So the majority of a lot of my budget, I had like $10,000 to spend on redoing this entire condo. And a lot of that went to the floor, the paint, and I'll show you a couple other things we did. Again, we got rid of the carpet, put in all that. Um, it had those sliding doors before and I really wanted French doors. So we put in French doors. I tried to make the most of the small space by kind of making us a little office area on this side. I just bought the Billy Ikea bookshelves, an Ikea desk, and tried to make a little area that I could do some part-time work from. And the thing about living in a really small space is you have to make it multifunctional, like almost creating multiple rooms and one room. So one end was the office and the other end was kind of like our living room. To make this space feel larger, again, we painted the walls and I wanted to make over this fireplace. My ever painted stone, I had never painted a fireplace, but again, my love of renovation and DIY was just born out of necessity. So I painted this stone. Um, I actually hired someone to do the floors and paint all of the walls. I ended up painting the upstairs, but I think I had them paint the downstairs. This is how broke we are. See this couch? That is half of the sectional that was in our old house, but the couch was too big. So we just brought half of it with us. This kitchen was small and closed off completely from the rest of the house. And that was not going to work with a toddler. Like I need to be able to see where he was. So in a minute here, I'll show you what we did. There were some cabinets above this stove. Um, and we, kept these original i didn't change anything with the cabinets i kept the countertops and the floors um, but you'll see we removed that metal backsplash i had um, my handy guy who did everything else put in this a white tile subway backsplash we got all new appliances that was another big ticket item when it came to the budget and right here I had them open the wall in between the kitchen and the dining room, which leads into that living room. But there was a little partition because when we opened it up, there was there actually a water line. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So as you can see here, that opened that up. We did have to leave it. Like I said, there was a water line, but it was so much better to be able to see through and see the baby. You can see we were watching Sesame Street at the time and took this picture. 
This was our primary bathroom. And again, it was bright red and it was within the bedroom. So trying to figure out how to close that off and make it a separate bathroom area was a top priority. The solution for making it feel closed off from the room and not just a part of it was building this barn door. My dad and I actually built this together. We had never built anything like that before, but it was perfect to just kind of close it off when we wanted to close it off and feel like the bathroom was not in the bedroom. We painted the exterior of the condo as well. And this was actually covered by the HOA because every so often they were responsible for painting the exterior. We ended up selling this for a profit. We lived there for three years. This is actually the house that my husband and I have lived in the longest. We're about to be in our current home almost three years. I remember being in this house and I swear I got like a word from God and he was like, start fixing this place up, you're gonna move. And I thought he was crazy. I was like, what are you talking about? We still have a year left of residency. And I just kept hearing him tell me like, get this place prepared to move. And so I started painting the walls when my child was sleeping. I was working part-time in real estate, so I kind of had my foot in the market and just saw that things were on the up. And I quietly started telling people like, hey, I might sell my townhome. I don't know, I'm rent the last year we're here. And I had an agent from my previous hometown reach out to me and said, I've got somebody who's looking to buy a house in the city we were in for their child that's getting ready to go to school. And we ended up selling it to them, made quite a bit of profit, rented that last year, gave us a little bit of a bigger house, and then saved most of that money to buy the very next house that we renovated and sold.